going back in time now, 650,000 years. Here's what the temperature has been on our Earth. Now, one thing that kind of jumps out at you is, do, do they ever fit together? <laughs> the relationship is actually very complicated, but there is one relationship that is far more powerful than all the others, and it is this. When there is more carbon dioxide, the temperature gets warmer. Al Gore says the relationship between temperature and CO2 is complicated, but he doesn't say what those complications are. In fact, there was something very important in the ice core data that he failed to mention. Professor Ian Clark is a leading Arctic paleoclimatologist who looks back into the Earth's temperature record tens of millions of years. When we look at uh, climate on long scales, we're looking for geological material that actually records climate. If we're to take an ice sample, for example, we use isotopes to reconstruct temperature, but the atmosphere that's imprisoned in that ice, we liberate, and then we look at the CO2 content. Professor Clark and others have indeed discovered, as Al Gore says, a link between carbon dioxide and temperature. But what Al Gore doesn't say is that the link is the wrong way round. So here we're looking at the ice core record from Vostok, and in the red we see temperature going up from early time to later time at a very key interval when we came out of a glaciation. And we see the temperature going up, and then we see the CO2 coming up. CO2 lags behind that increase. It's got an 800-year lag, so temperature is leading CO2 by 800 years. There have now been several major ice core surveys. Every one of them shows the same thing. The temperature rises or falls, and then, after a few hundred years, carbon dioxide follows. And they're lying to children as well. They lie even to children. This book was written and produced by the producer of Al Gore's movie. What she did was to switch the captions on the graphs for temperature and CO2 going back 650,000 years so that she could show that it was CO2 that had changed first and temperature that had followed. When the unanimous opinion of the scientific literature by a very simple series of measurements shows that it was exactly the other way around. It was temperature that had always changed first and CO2 had followed. And she wrote the text that you see there stating this lie, and when we drew her attention and that of her publishers to this lie, they point-blank refused to correct it. They didn't deny it was a lie, but they would not correct it. And this in a book for children. And here is the last 10,000 years of the, what's called the Holocene warm period. And you can see that most of the time it's been warmer than it is today.